Hey everyone, welcome back to 996 Owl, and I wouldn't mind more shootouts. That was, that was the first shootout this season, first shootout in a really long while. And you know, if the Cows could lose almost every game in a shootout, I'd be for it. I, I missed how exciting and intense shootouts are, and this one went, went pretty long. I think the Cows had three goal scorers, overall they had seven shooters. But uh, as a Coyotes fan, you forget that sh a shootout is actually part of hockey. I'm sure other teams, they probably go to their shootout more often. They're good teams, competent, competitive teams that go to their shootout more often than not. But for Coyotes, it's a rarity and you forget. And you kind of don't even know what players are really good at shootouts. Like I remember Hennis Rosa was really good, Dvorak, Garland, Schmaltz. So, uh, Keller sometimes, but now, you know, all those players are gone. So, you know, the two familiar players we had in the shootout was Keller and Schmaltz. And Keller scored a, a great shot. Schmaltz kind of fumbled it a bit. But then you got Bukestad and Nick Ritchie scoring in the shootout. That, that you know, gave me a big smile to see Nick Rich, first Nick Ritchie being put on the shootout. And then actually dangling UC Soros and roofing it. Almost barred down. That was great to see. Cowboys lose 4-3. A frustrating game. It, it seemed like the Cowboys weren't even battling the National Predators. It seemed like they were battling the referees. The Cowboys had seven penalties. Most of them not even penalties. I usually hate complaining about referees. But it was so blatant how they were just taking over the game. And so biased against the Coyotes for one reason or another. There was... Even, I think, the sixth penalty against Fisher late in the game. Uh, a National Predator player cross-checks Fisher. Fisher didn't have the puck, wasn't even doing anything. Right in front of a ref, and the ref didn't call it. But the ref, you know, in the neutral zone, called the penalty. It was two minutes left in the game. Maybe that's why the ref closest to the cross-check didn't call it. But yeah, just frustrating as a fan. So many penalties. The game was so good when it was 5-on-5. Five five. It's not even that I would I wanted more power plays for the Coyotes I didn't even want that I just wanted them to play five on five because when these two teams were playing five on five it was an exciting game it reminded me of the playoff bubble this these two teams got some sort of hatred that started to brew in the bubble maybe it went away because they didn't play each other in the shortened season they're in separate divisions so there, there's something there, and I felt like it was coming to fruition a little bit, but the refs were, trying, were getting in the way a bit too much. But some other storylines here, Chikrin and Schmaltz drawing back in the lineup. Unfortunately, Gunther gets scratched, and uh, Andre Turney goes with 11 forwards and 7 defensemen. If they went with 12 forwards, I'm pretty sure Gunther would have played. Uh, but now, you know, uh, Brown got injured in this game, so they're down a defenseman again. So maybe Gunther draws in and they go back to the 12-6 formation. But, uh, yeah, they start this game exactly like how they did against Vegas, where they get to early penalty trouble. Cowboys had three penalties in the first seven minutes of the game with zero shots. Uh, it looked like one of those games that might get out of hand, but, you know, they killed off two out of the three. They, get, they go down early, one nothing. Nashville converts on one of those power plays. But after that, Cowboys get right back to business. They start getting more shots. Uh, Keller and Schmaltz were put together. We missed that magic. It's been like a lot of months since Keller and Schmaltz have played together. And then even Chikrin, there were some moments where the Keller line was on and Chikrin was a defenseman there. They were making some good passing plays. I think, you know, Chikrin and Schmaltz, they had some good chances. They were engaged in the game. Schmaltz was moving his feet. He had, like, one partial breakaway, I think, early in the second period that he was denied on. Chikrin was engaged. He was getting passionate with the referees. Maybe could have been a bit better defensively, but it was a good first game for both those players. Um, Thankfully, they're not going to have to take like five games to get back to NHL speed. They look like they didn't look out of place and look like they fit well with the current roster. Hopefully, Keller and Schmaltz work on that magic. I love seeing their magic. And we don't know how much time left we have to see the magic of Schmaltz and Keller and even Chikrin's magic. So just savor every moment you can when they're all on the roster and playing on the same uh, night. Right before the end of the first period, there was a huge fight with Josh Brown. I think he, this is the hit where he got injured. 
He took a high hit against the glass and then immediately dropped the gloves against Smith, not Craig Smith, some other Smith on Nashville and just pummeled him. One of the best one-sided fights the Cowboys have had in a really long time where just a straight out victory threw so many punches, was just pummeling this guy. It was great to see a Coyote dominate a fight and not get his you know lunch taken to him like most of the time it happens with these fighters uh, throughout the past few seasons. So we go into the second period. Kraus scores with a burst of speed and a crazy shot. Snipe show makes it 1-1. And then, you know, Michelli hits the post right after that. And then Bukestad scores, makes it 2-1. And then it was a 4-on-4. Four four. It was a sort of a, an electric second period. Even though the Cowboys were massively out, outshot in the second period, 13-6. to six. But Cowboys come out of that period up 2-1. So you're going to the third period up 2-1. It's been a great game. Sure, so many penalties, but we'll see what happens. You know, you think back to Thursday night against Vegas where they're down only 1-0. Let's see what happens in the third period. This time they go into third period, immediately get a penalty. Immediately it's 2-2. Less than a minute after the uh, National makes it 2-2. It's 3-2. Now you're down in the dumps. Now you're like, oh, now I know why. This is a tank season. And then another penalty, and then another penalty on top of that, and then uh, Cowboys scoring the short-handed uh, with Bukestad scoring his second of the night. Bukestad had a crazy night. He had two goals, one assist, and the shootout goal. Just roofing pucks, sniping bar down on this uh, tying goal to make it 3-3. And then, you know, Nashville in this third period, they were taking over just like in the in the second period, they outshot Coyotes 13 to nine, and they had three posts in that third period. So I think Nashville probably deserved to win in regulation. They also had the refs on their side. You know, Nashville had seven power plays, converted on two of the seven power plays. But as the game went on, Nashville was just out shooting, out chancing. The Coyotes, like I said, three posts in the third period on top of their two goals. And in the overtime period, Nashville outshot Arizona 9-0 in the overtime. I felt Coyotes had they had a lot of possession on one shift with Schmaltz, Fisher, and Moser, but they couldn't really generate anything or get anything going. And they kind of just tired themselves out circling the offensive zone. Nashville even got a penalty, uh, power play in the overtime. Coyotes managed to kill it. And then, like I said, the shootout went pretty long. Ultimately, Cowboys lose in the shootout, but a good game. It was, you know, just another one of those competitive, good road games. It was a much better game than the Vegas game, but a not as it wasn't a terrible. That Vegas game wasn't a terrible game. So again, they still haven't played a miserable, unfortunate, you know, depressing showing since the Dallas game, their last home game of this season this was like what like three weeks ago now so even though they're on the road they're playing together some good games sure there's some troubling and concerning trends and issues of first of all taking penalties to start the game taking too many penalties and um, letting up the opposition score in bunches and flurries this was a huge problem last year where teams would score three goals in a matter of like four minutes five minutes we saw it against, you know, the first two games of the season in Pittsburgh and Boston. Now it's, you know, maybe only two goals. In Vegas, it was two goals. In Nashville, two goals, two goals in under a minute. So, yeah, those are trends. You want the Cowboys to start on time. Don't immediately go to the box. You let the team get into the game immediately when you take a penalty. And they go on the power play and they could touch the puck a lot. You know, make some skillful plays. You know, there's less pressure on them if they're on the power play to start the game. So I would like to, for them not to go on the penalty so much, penalty kill so much. Uh, don't start games on a penalty kill. And, you know, 5-on-5, five five, they had a pretty good game. Even though the Cowboys are like the worst 5-on-5 five five team in the league. So it's good confidence that they can play 5-on-5. Five five. Two of their three goals were 5-on-5. Five five. The other one was a shorthanded goal. So you take that, you learn from it, build on it. The roster is looking better when you have, you know, Chikrin on the back end added to the lineup and Schmaltz up up front. Uh, hopefully we get to see Gunther back. I would love to see like a Gunther, Schmaltz, Keller just providing and adding to the offensive mojo 
mojo even next to Kraus and Michelli. The power plays were shaken up. Power play one was Keller, Schmaltz, Richie, which I didn't like Richie there. Maybe put Boyd there, but yeah, it's the first line on the power play unit. So maybe that's why they want to change things up. On the back end, you had Chikrin and Gosses Bear. And then PP2, you had Michelli, Kraus, Boyd. So Boyd goes from PP1 to PP2. And then Moser and Ma uh, Valimaki. So I guess because Gunther was scratched, they went with two defensemen on both power play units. Usually PP2, it's only one defenseman with Gunther up front. So we'll see how that shakes out for the next game. They're in Carolina Wednesday night. Should be a big test and another one of those elite teams. But I enjoyed this night's game. Thought it was really good, fun, competitive, entertaining. Everyone was having fun with Bukestad just killing it and sniping those goals. And Nick Ritchie <clears throat> just got to play that shootout go over, over, and over. Uh, really funny to see Ritchie put out there for the shootout and then uh, make an amazing play to score. So that's it for me. Great out of hockey. Keep it rolling. They get one point in the standings. They're still like at probably now 30th place. It's between them and the Ducks. Pretty much battling for last place. Columbus has won a bunch of games. The St. Louis Blues went out of the basement immediately. They, they just went on a six-game win streak. Um, you know, Ottawa, Vancouver, and Buffalo are struggling, even though they shouldn't be struggling. So I would just keep it on Anaheim and Columbus, too. I think those might be the tank partners, but, you know, it's still early in the season. It hasn't really shaken out who's going to be the massive sellers and the massive tankers. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And as always, thank you for your support.